Hi, my name is Ting Sung. I'm a singer songwriter, and last week I made a video talking about how I went from failing English tests to achieving an 8.5 in the IELTS test, and I've received so many lovely comments from you guys, and I'm so grateful for each and every single one of you. But I'm here today to make a confession. <gasps> For some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to do a speaking test outside on an open grass field with many people walking around and looking at me while I was filming. Um, such a great idea for an introvert. I was distracted. I was very anxious as well, and it really showed. I'm not gonna say too much. Actually, I'm just gonna show you how I would sound like in that kind of environment. Without further ado. Here's the full truth. I'm outside. This never happens. <laughs> Today, what I think would be fun for me to do is to do a full IELTS speaking test. Um, I have my friend behind the camera over there, and he's gonna act as my examiner for today. He has access to the Cambridge uh, IELTS books. Versions 14 to 18. I have no ideas which he's gonna choose. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. I'm gonna try my best to be serious, but you know, we're not in a very formal setting right now. So, if I don't perform too well, please bear with me. I promise there is something to learn in this video. Let's go. Part one The first topic is paying pills. What kinds of bills do you have to pay? Um, now that I live independently on my own, there are so many bills that I have to take care of every month. Electricity, food, groceries, um, and now I actually have credit card debts. Can you believe that? It's strange to finally be a grown-up and do adult things like this. Um, but yeah, I was not looking forward to paying bills like this at all, but eventually it did come. How do you usually pay your pills in cash or by another method? Um, I think that I'm not just speaking for myself um, on this one, but using cards or specifically banking apps on your phone has become a norm pretty much these days for not just young people like myself anymore, um, even um, older people in my family or younger siblings of mine not siblings, um, younger cousins of mine, they have all started to get used to using cards or banking apps to make payments more efficiently. And we only ever use cash if we absolutely have to, or if we, has, or if we have cash lying around. Okay, so have you ever forgotten to pay a bill? Um, I wouldn't say forgotten. I have definitely been slow um, to pay some certain bills, especially my insurance because it doesn't really have any consequence if I forget to pay them on time. Um, but other than that, every other kinds of bills have this system where they notify, notify me notify me five to 10 days in advance um, through emails or phone calls or texts. So unfortunately, I have never really forgotten to pay an important bills before. Okay, is there anything you could do to make your bills cheaper? Buying less stuff is an obvious answer. Uh, besides, I think using less electricity or just be mindful when to turn on or off the AC would definitely do me wonders because I tend to just leave the AC on all day, especially now that we are entering summertime and it gets hot pretty much 24 seven and I cannot bear the heat at all. If I can manage that better, my electricity bill would significantly becomes more um, affordable. Okay, let's move on with the next topic, maps. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it's better to use a paper map or a map on your phone? Um, I have never actually used a paper map before. Like I know they exist and I have had them before, but yeah, I was just born and raised in a time where phones have become ubiquitous and using maps on your phone it's just so convenient and they don't even require you to look at the map anymore. They just kind of tell you where to go. So yeah, definitely um, map on my phone. Um, when was the last time you need to use a map? Uh, today, <laughs> just earlier, I needed to 
get from my home to this grass field and I was not sure which way um, to take because I don't really frequent this route so I needed to rely on Google Maps to find out how to get here. If you visit a new city, do you always use a map to find your way around? Uh, yeah. How else am I gonna do it? <laughs> it's not like I was gonna talk to a stranger, a foreigner, um, to ask um, to find my way around. I'm just not that confident opening up conversations to strangers like that. And even if I did, um, I don't think that it will be an efficient use of my time when I travel. I would much rather just use Google Maps and get to more places. Yeah. And in general, do you find it easy to read maps? E saying yes is... I'm not confident in saying yes because while I don't have trouble using Google Maps, since it tells me how to get to where I need it to, all of the time, I never really have had to read the map before. So, I don't know. Maybe yes? Okay, now let's talk about sleep. Uh huh. How many hours do you usually sleep at night? Um, these days, I would say seven, six to seven hours, which is an improvement um, compared to my past self. Uh, I usually uh, go to bed at around 12 a.m., 1 a.m., um, and wake up at around 8, 7 sometimes. Um, yeah, I'm really happy about my current sleeping habits. Do you sometimes sleep through the day? Uh, yeah, whenever I wake up too early in the morning, I just know instinctively that I need to take a nap around 1 p.m. or so like a power nap for 15 minutes or else I would not be able to function at all um, during the afternoon and I would definitely crash when 6-7 p.m. rolls around. What do you do if you can get to sleep at night? Um, I usually put on a podcast um, but on a very low volume and I find that hearing people talk without actually understanding <laughs> what they're saying because the volume is so low is a great way to put me to sleep. And do you re ever remember the dreams you had while you were asleep? Mm, sometimes yes, and I try my absolute best to do so by writing them down in my notes app on my phone. Um, sometimes I don't even need to try and it just kind of sticks in my brain. But um, yeah, other times, I it, like regardless of how hard I try, I still cannot really recall what happened um, in my dream. And uh, it... It is kind of sad whenever that happens because I'm someone who believes that dreams tell you something. Yeah. Now let's talk about drinks. Mm -hmm. What do you like to drink without dinner? Uh, ooh, I love this question. Um, I would go for Coke every single time. Uh, if we don't have Coke in the fridge, I would go for water or orange juice. Um, but yes, I definitely need to drink something with my meals, not just dinner. Because if I don't have a drink with my meal, it would be significantly less enjoyable. Um, do you drink a lot of water every day? I would say so. I sing a lot and I also teach. Both of those activities require me to use my voice a lot. And if I don't keep them hydrated, I'm definitely going to have a sore throat the next day. Do you prefer drinking tea or coffee? Uh, I used to drink tea a lot with milk, um, but nowadays I need a coffee as soon as I wake up and then another one around 1 to 2 p.m. I guess I'm entering adulthood <laughs> and I cannot really function without caffeine anymore. Um, if people visit your home, what do you usually offer them to drink? I don't really have guests ever, <laughs> but if I do, then water is my first choice because it's easy, it's always available, and I wouldn't say that anyone rejects a cup of water ever, uh, but if I'm feeling fancy or if I specifically know what the guests want and what their preferences are when it comes to beverages, then I would serve them accordingly. So maybe a tea, maybe a cup of coffee, yeah. Now we will talk about swimming. Mm -hmm. 
Did you learn to swim when you were a child? Yes.、Um, I, mm, I wouldn't say a child. I only started to take swimming lessons when I was in grade six with my cousins. So I was like eleven back then. I guess I, could, I was still considered a child.、Um, we went to the swimming pool near our house and took swimming lessons for a month during summertime, and it was very fun. And.、Uh... How often do you go swimming now?、Uh, I try to go as much as I can, but realistically, only a few times a month.、Um, and I'm trying to improve on that because、um, it's basically the only physical activity or sports that I kind of enjoy doing. What places are there for swimming where you live?、Um, there are a lot of swimming pools for the public in the city,、um, but I don't really enjoy going to any of them. Um, because I don't like to share swimming pools with people that I don't know.、Uh, yeah. Do you think it would be more enjoyable to go swimming outdoors or at an indoor pool?、Mm. I would prefer an outdoor pool any day. I just love looking at the sky while I swim.、Um, it feels like I'm immersing myself in nature more. Whereas if I swim in an indoor pool, yes, I still get the Physical exercise done, but it feels weirdly constricted. Yeah. Okay, that is the end of part one, and we will move to part two. This is your question. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Okay, what is it? All right. You will have one minute to prepare. Uh huh. Okay, my question for today is: Describe some technology, example, an app, phone, software program that I decided to stop using. Hmm. Okay. You want me to prepare? Start now. Okay. Thumbs up.、Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Now you will have one to two minutes for this,、mm-hmm. and I will let you know when the time is up. Okay. You may begin now. All right. Um, today I want to talk about an app called Anki, A N K I, and it's a flashcard app that can be found on the computer and also、um, on your phone. I actually downloaded this app. On both of those devices,、um, because I heard about them from my friends and from a lot of YouTubers,、um, they were talking about ways that they learned vocabulary words more efficiently.、Um, and I was in grade eleven, I believe. I was starting to、uh, prepare for the IELTS test. I was learning a lot of vocabulary at school, and I really, really needed to find a way for them to stick into my brain because I. I'm not someone who likes to study things in the traditional way. A lot of my friends could just study vocabulary words by staring at them on a book,、um, but I cannot really ever do that. So I I was looking for an alternative, right? So I this this was actually a free download from their website, and I installed them on my computer and started to import some vocabulary words in them,、um, some flashcards、um, in, into them, and I. Only was doing it for I think maybe two weeks max,、um, because I just found it too meticulous and the process of importing vocabulary words and the definition of them and example sentences was just too time consuming for my personal liking.、Um, so I gradually just started to use it less, and after a while, it was pretty much abandoned. <laughs> I never touched the app again on my phone or on my computer. They're still there, but、um, the last time I opened either of them was probably three years ago, when I decided to give them another try, and it still didn't click for me. So nowadays, what I do to learn vocabulary words is to just write them down on a piece of paper and use Thumbs them. Thumbs up. Okay. So that's on key for you guys. Okay. That is the end of the part two. Now we will move to part three. Discussion topic will be computer games.、Mm. Um, what kinds of computer games do people play in your country?、Um, hmm. 
computer games.、Um, I personally don't play them a lot, so I'm only speaking from things that I see online. Because I occasionally do see YouTubers, Vietnamese YouTubers or streamers playing games,、um, and the most popular ones I would say. Is first-person shooting games in which you role-play as、um, a shooter and you go around hitting <laughs>、uh, people of the opposite team. I, I guess that's what's happening.、Um, and another kind of games, computer games that I do see a lot is football games.、Um, back in secondary school. Pretty much all of my classmates were playing some sort of football games on the computer. I didn't really understand what they were doing or how the game worked at all, but it looks pretty realistic. So yeah.、Um, why do people enjoy playing computer games?、Mm, for enjoyment purposes, of course. It's a great pastime. I have found. Usually, a lot of people look at video games, computer games, and there is a stigma. That it's a waste of time, or that it could in,、um, encourage them to do things violently、um, for some reason. But actually, if you spend a moderate amount of time on computer games,、um, I don't think that it can do any harm. And also, it's a great way for you to have fun with your friends as well. If the game is multiplayer,、um, especially if you. Um, live far away from your friends, and、um, there's no other way for you to spend a significant amount of time to reconnect.、Uh, sorry, to connect with them. I would say that online multiplayer video games is、um, phenomenal in、um, sustaining your friendship and having a thing for you guys to bond over, even though you are not together physically. Do you think that all computer games should have a minimum age for players? I wouldn't say all of them do. Some of them definitely, if they、um, feature violence, as I mentioned before,、um, those are definitely not appropriate for children to play.、Um, but but other than that, I think if the game,、um, the the objective of the game is、um, simple, is、um, nothing too inappropriate. For example, if just a, if it's a puzzle game, right? I don't think there should be age limits to those. I would say that it's even encouraged for children to play puzzle games in which they would have to use their problem-solving skills.、Um, yeah, it depends on the genre and the content. Okay, thank you so much. Now let's discuss technology in the classroom.、Mm-hmm. In what ways can technology in the classroom be helpful?、Uh, being a Teacher, a tutor myself,、um, I think that nowadays the implementation of technology in the classroom is inevitable and is very much helpful for both teachers and students. I'm just gonna take a very simple example, like the projector. Having a way to show your computer screen onto、uh, a whiteboard、uh, so that the whole class can see what you're doing on the computer is a really great way to illustrate certain aspects of a lesson,、um, and also organizing activities, games for children.、Uh, sorry, for students to take part in during class using their phones, such as、um, Quizlet or、uh, I forgot the name of the other website. But、um, yeah, it's a great way for students to engage in the lesson and feel like,、um, and feel that they want to contribute.、Um, yeah. Do you agree that students are often better at using technology than the teachers? Most of the time, if it's a relatively modern kind of device or technology, then I would say yes.、Um, a lot of the times, I even my. Myself, I I am a young person, but some of my younger students know how to、uh, navigate certain websites better than I do.、Um, but other kinds of technology, such as、uh, how to use like a class management website or software, those definitely are、um, technology that teachers know how to do better than students. Do you believe that computers will ever replace human teachers? Mm, I'm gonna be optimistic and say no. As powerful as AI technology has become in recent years,、um, I don't think that there will ever be a day when human teachers 
are completely replaceable by computers. The most important thing that a human teacher can do for students that AI I don't think ever could do is the emotional support that they can provide. Um, teachers are able to listen to the students' um, concern and find a way to help them overcome their struggles and connect with them emotionally, which um, I'm not saying that AI technology can never reach, but the level of intimacy between people I think are always going to be superior than that between a computer and a human. So no, I don't think that computers will ever, ever 100% replace human teachers. Okay, thank you. That is the end of our speaking test today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <sighs> okay, so there you go, guys. That's a full speaking test from me. What do you guys think? So yeah, I also learned a few lessons from that experience. Number one, just don't do it outside like that. <laughs> Especially if you get socially anxious like I do. Instead of focusing on my answers, a lot of the time I was just staring back at people who were staring at me. So it really distracted me from giving an answer. And second of all, it is okay to make mistakes. We're humans. We are prone to make mistakes. As long as you realize your mistakes and you acknowledge it and you make sure that you don't do it again, that's all there is to that. Like, there's nothing else you can do. And then I need to cut myself some slacks, right? Tell me what you think down below in the comments and also leave me suggestions for videos that you want to see from me. Um, I'm going to be back very soon with more English speaking content. Um, probably story time because currently I have a lot of stories to tell. I have so much to get off my chest, but I just really wanted to talk about my feelings today <laughs> because that was really, really frustrating for me personally. Yeah, hope this sheds some light on um, the truth of the matter, which is you shouldn't ever put anyone on a pedestal for anything. Yeah, and I'll see you guys next time.